Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at the standard out file provided in the OS package. Now, we didn't have to use it directly before, but we've been using it from the very beginning. Once we started writing Go program and printing to the screen, we've been using standard out. So now we're going to try and understand this thing that we've been using. So we're going to take a look at what is standard out exactly. And then, of course, we're going to play around by using it just a little bit. All right. So if we jump over to our code and, you know, create a directory, start up our code editor and do the basic stuff we always do, which is, you know, create a main program file and then, you know, put some thing in there to get us oriented to writing a simple test to play with this um, understanding standard out. The first thing I want to do, though, is before I actually show you standard out and explain what it is, I actually want to go back to something we've done in the previous and this chapter. So remember, the previous chapter was using IO. And then in this chapter, we learn about files. So let's create a file if it doesn't exist. And we know to do that already by using OS that open file and then pass into it the file name and then the options to create a file. So we're going to do just that. We're going to create a file if it doesn't exist, and then we're going to write some stuff into it. And we're going to use a couple of ways that we know already of writing into a file. Since a file implements the IO write and IO reader interface, we know that we can use write string. And of course, since it's also implements um, IO write string interface, we can use that directly. So we can either use it through IO um, package or use it through the file itself because the file object implement those methods. Does that make sense? Um, and so we're going to use three different ways of writing to the same file that we've just created and have open for writing. And then of course, we're going to test it by compiling it and running and seeing that oh, it exactly as we expect, which is it should have these three lines of text in it. So now that we have that example working, where we open a file, write to it, that's fine. There's nothing spectacular. We've done that before, but we want to sort of start off from something we know already and then add new ideas to it. So I'm going to go to the OS package documentation and look at these variables. And you can see, I'm not going to spend time showing you this text here. You can slow down. You can go to the package documentation yourself and read it. But basically it tells you how it creates these three variables, standard in, standard out, and standard error. And that basically you shouldn't close them. So um, note that caveat there. If you close error, it might end up right into somewhere else. We're not going to talk about error in this section, um, in this video, but um, we're going to stick to standard out. And so since standard out is a variable, I can, and it's a file, um, it treats it like a file, I can just use that for writing out, right? Standard out, it says a file, basically, and I hope that tells you it's always a file that can use for output only. If it was a file that was meant for input, it would have probably just called it standard in out, but they call it standard out. So I'm gonna create a variable f, and I'm gonna assign it to this OS variable standard out. Um, notice I don't have to create a variable, but I did that just so the, all the code I already have would just work. And so now I'm going to assign it to this variable f. And then just as before, I'm going to rerun our code. And again, what do you see happening is that the code works as before, where we can now um, compile, run, and get our output written to the screen instead of to a file. And that makes sense because if standard out represents output, and now we can see that standard out actually represent a specific output. It represents the display. So your monitor or your display, there's a file associated with it, and that file is called standard out. So anything you want to show up on your display or your monitor, just write to standard out. So now that we know that our STD out is just another file, we know that stuff like FMT print line, you can just shortcut or sugar coding for writing to OS that's standard out. And so you could have accomplished the same thing by doing like OS that's standard out that write string and write your string. Um, but we're going to stick with FMT print line, for example. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy the contents of our main that go to standard out. And we're going to do that by simply saying that when you run this program, it opens the file main that go because it should exist, right? Because we're using that to actually run the program is the program we want to run. So it must be there. So we're going to open and then we'll just use IO that copy. And we can copy from the file we open, which represent main that go to text file. And we're going to write to this other file, which is OS that standard out, which represents our display. 
and essentially what we're doing is a shortcut for like reading some bytes from file and then writing it out to standard out as remember when we did io um the chapter on io um we said so was io that copy is a shortcut for just reading stuff and then writing it and there you go it actually works as expected nothing strange or new here so we can go back to our program and comment out that first line um the fmt print line if we wanted to and now when we run our code it actually print out the exact same thing and we could redirect that to a second file and then compare them and as must the output must be literally the same it has to be because we read in the main that go on writing it out and then we can also just run other that go and it would give us the exact same output um so hopefully you find this um enlightening i hope that you know all this time you've been using something um again if you're new to programming as sort of this um course is intended to be is for people who are relatively new to programming maybe you've never programmed any other language before or you you're new to to, to go laying um something like standard out and standard in which we're going to cover next um could be kind of strange and so um i hope you enjoy the material um thumbs up the video if you like what you're seeing um, and definitely please help me spread the word and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed and you're listening to this video, and you haven't subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. So if you're still hanging around, I have something for you, but it's only for people who, um, might not to be too comfortable with how the OS is operate, um, representing your keyboard and monitor as a file. So I kind of wanted to just talking about that a little bit but this is not for everyone so if you know this stuff already please just the video is over no more code this is just for people who might still be like hey what's going on there so as you know you have a computer and so we will call it monitoring the keyboard I'm, I'm gonna ignore the mouse for example and so we're gonna say inside a computer you have something called device drivers now what are device drivers device drivers are pieces of code that are responsible for the operation of any peripheral or even things that are inside and outside of the computer, right? So we said peripheral things like outside of the keyboard and monitor, mouse, um, camera, speakers, all that, those are needs drivers. So everything that you can attach to your computer, even stuff that come inside a computer, like even if you're built in network card, those need a device drivers. And so here the device driver is representing the keyboard and the mouse, so they're separate device drivers, by the way, um, but they, each one of the, the drivers represent for those peripherals are representing them as file. And so for the keyboard represented standard in, and for the f uh, monitor, the driver for that is represented as a file. And so the OS, the way Linux does stuff is when it talks to device drivers, it pretty much treats everything that those drivers handle as a file. So not going to get into the detail of it, but basically the architecture of Linux is that when you write a device driver, you pretty much gets represented by a file. And that f those files for represent all the devices in your computer are in this directory called slash dev. Um, again, I could show you a little bit of this stuff, but we're not going to worry about that, too much of it in this course. And hopefully now, Maybe that doesn't confuse you anymore, but probably help you go, oh, that's how my f um, keyboard and my monitor get represented as files because the device driver is there. It gets treated like a file when the operating system manipulates it or talks to it. And so it represents this logical file. It's not a real file, it's a logical file. And so when you in your program, when you say send some code to the standard out, well, it goes to the device driver and the device driver knows the detail of your monitor and knows how to write those correctly there. And we're gonna see in the next video when we read from standard in, um, again, the operating system said, give me some bytes or copy some bytes or read some bytes from here. And the device driver turn around and do a bunch of stuff to read from that keyboard and present the data to us as if you know it really was a file that we're reading from. And you can think the same thing for your mouse, which is just an input only device. You can think of your network card as an input output device. So it's a file that you can read and write to, as opposed to one that just does input only or one that does output only like your monitor. And speakers, same thing. You know, your speakers are gonna be output only device, your microphone, input only device. So once you understand this idea, you can see it applies to like a lot of things on your computer. Okay, that really is it and take care. See you next time. Bye.